Welcome to the channel. My name is Laura and this is Laura's Little Library. Wow, so it has been a while since I filmed a recent reads video. I feel like it hasn't been that long, like it's probably been two and a half, maybe three months, but it's, it's interesting because what happened is I filmed that video, I had a chunk of time where I read like a few books, not a lot, and all of a sudden I started reading a whole bunch, and I'm like, oh my word, I need to get this video done, and then just time went by and I had other video ideas, and now I'm finally doing it and I've read a lot of books. I especially wanted to get this up right before the start of spooky season because I have such big reading plans. I've got this big reading extravaganza, so stay tuned as the explanation for that and the book haul for it will be coming on Thursday, so just in a couple days. So make sure you subscribe and, and you know, hit the bell so that you can be notified when it's uploaded Thursday morning. So I'm just going to go over all the books that I've read, give some of my brief thoughts because like I said, it's a lot of books. And you don't want to hear me babble on for 30 minutes about each book when I've got more than 20 books. Like, seriously. Uh, so I am picking up right where the last video left off as it's Recent Reads number 4 for the year. And the first book that I finished since then has actually been The Handmaid's Tale. And that was not one I was really expecting to read, but a coworker of mine wanted to buddy read it with me. So I said, yeah, sure, why not? And I haven't seen the TV show, so that's kind of my next thing to do is to like watch the TV show and compare it to the book. I am interested in reading the second book with her, but we'll see. I actually gave it three out of five stars. I, I loved the idea and the premise of the story. I just had such a hard time because it seemed like there were three timelines. There were, there was, before the big societal shift, the as she's preparing to be a handmaid, question mark, and then the current her at the guy's house. And it and it would never explicitly say when we switched between times. It would just be her kind of reflecting, almost like a storytelling, but like it was just it was really hard for me to follow. Like, just sometimes they'd be flashbacks, sometimes they'd just be stories, inserts, and it just, I had such a hard time keeping track of things. And I felt like there were so many dots that just didn't quite connect. They came so close, like the plot points and the ideas came so close to connecting, but it was like, I still don't understand what you're getting at and where it came from. Like, I needed more explanation, but I feel like with more explanation, it would have just been such a big info dump, so hard hard line to walk. I did not really get attached enough to any of the characters. <laughs> I mean I liked one or two. I liked two of the side characters but I was not attached enough to any of the main characters to actually care so that when the ending came around I was like I don't I, don't, I just didn't care. So when we get this cliffhanger ending which would have been an amazing cliffhanger ending, I sat there and I said, if it goes this way, great. If not that way, great. Whatever. But because it didn't explicitly say, I'm just not super attached. I just, I didn't need to know. And that was very disappointing. Still like a solidly written book, I can see why a lot of people like it. It's just not my personal cup of tea. It's not the style that I enjoy not what I normally go for but I had a lot of fun reading it with my friend and we had lots of good discussions as well so it's it's still a three out of five stars it's still one I would recommend for people who do like that type of literature the next book that I finished was also a buddy read and that was a taste for love by Jennifer Yen I buddy read this with the enchanted reader so I will link her channel down below so that you can go and follow her and all of her social media. She is so sweet and so amazing. So we read this book together and I gave it four out of five stars. It is very much like the Great British Baking Show meets the Taiwanese American community. And it was, it was so interesting and so wonderful. The thing about this book that made it 
amazing for right now is that there are so many like modern pop culture references again like the great british baking show music artists things like that that was like oh my word this is so great it's so relatable i understand everything i don't know how well that's gonna hold up in like five to ten plus years but it was it was enjoyable now i had an interesting journey with the uh Oh, I should probably tell you what this is about. So, it's this girl and her mom owns a bakery, her dad owns a restaurant, and they're kind of a joint thing. She's really good at baking, and her mom is obsessed with finding her a nice Asian boyfriend, and she is not super thrilled about it, or at least by her mom's methods, and she finds out that the competition that her family hosts every year has this year been a little bit tainted to only accept applicants who are eligible Asian boys? And I, I was so funny. It was so hilarious. I loved reading it. The love interest outside of that plot point, I did not like him at first. And I, and I know you weren't supposed to because the main character didn't like him, but it wasn't strong enough for it to be like hate to love or enemies to lovers. But it wasn't like pleasantness. And so I, I feel like he took a lot longer for me to warm up to than the main character, which is kind of hard as a reader. I'm just like, I would definitely not warm up to him just by doing that. Just by him, like, doing that. But she kind of did, and I was like, oh, okay. But there was a lot of damsel in distress moments where she would, like, physically trip and fall, and he would catch her over and over again. And it got a little repetitive, in my opinion, there is a nice sister relationship in this book, and I wish we had gotten more of it, either in flashbacks or by, like, the sister actually being there when she was in the state. And it kind of reminded me a little bit of my sister and our relationship, because I understand what it's like to live in a different state than your sister. It was a really nice dynamic to see and to read about, and a very interesting element. And I love how she ended up being tied in at the end of the, of the book. It was kind of a, I found this book to have a, a little bit of a weird pacing just because it took so long to get to the competition and then the competition, it's like, time just flew by. Like, I think it, like, there was, there were multiple days in between the different um, elements of the, of the competition between each round and it, in the book you would just read from round to round to round, like there was no in-between time. And I felt like that was kind of weird, especially for how far back in the book it was pushed. But also, like, yeah, like, it just, it was so weird, because there was so much leading. You spent the first half of the book not even talking about the competition very much, and then you talked a lot about the competition, and then the competition ended up being this little thing with not a lot of detail. Um, but it was the best part. I loved it. It was the best part of the book. But yeah, this was just jam-packed full of drama. It was very fun, very exciting, really hard to predict what was going to happen. There was like, it was such a twisty ending for a contemporary, which was really interesting uh, because near the end of the competition, you're starting to find out the backstories of people and everybody's motivations. And it was just so twisty that you just couldn't predict it. But so unique, because that's not what a lot of contemporaries have. They don't twist this way. They have surprises and interesting things, but they don't twist. But this one, this one twisted. So yeah, I say four out of five stars. I very much enjoyed it. I would highly recommend you pick it up if you like baking or boba or, um, yeah, just a good contemporary. I, I liked this a lot. I then actually read the first two volumes of a thing called Fables. It's a graphic novel and it's by Bill Willingham and it's it's so it's a graphic novel and it's the idea that fairy tale creatures are in the modern world with our like modern jobs like it's once upon a time but heavily influenced by other things so like the first one is really interesting like it's kind of a murder mystery and it's just a little bit more adult, I think, than the TV show Once Upon a Time, and the second volume was essentially Animal Farm. Just, it was Animal Farm. You had this farm with all the fairy tale animals that could still talk, and they pulled an animal farm on the humans. Like, it was exactly that. 
And I mean, I, I rated it two and three stars for each volume because I just, I just think it's not my cup of tea. Again, um, like other people would enjoy it. I'm glad I read a little bit of it just to kind of see what other literature is out there, but like was not one of my favorites. The twists were okay. I kept being told it would get better, but it just never really did. And it was, it was so short that that's why I finished them and I read two of them. But I just, it's not something I would want to continue with. I read With the Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedos, and I have read Clap with New Land, and oh, I loved this book as well. I rated this, what? Yeah, I rated this five out of five stars. Like, I loved it. I just, I love the characters and their dynamics with each other and who they are and what, like, they're responsive to situations. So it's, we follow this girl who had a baby when she was like 16-ish years old. Um, and so she, or was she even younger? She is in high school and she's had a child and we're following her when the child is actually two years old, baby girl. She is adorable, I love her. Um, but she also lives with her abuela and it's just the just the three of them and she's just trying to get by and finish high school while juggling the responsibilities of having a job, raising a daughter, taking care of her abuela. And she has this large passion for cooking. And there ends up being this class at her school that is a culinary class and at the end of it you take a trip to Spain for like spring break or something. And she she kind of conf she conflicts with what she wants. She wants to cook. She wants to have this experience. She wants to pursue that passion with what she needs to do. She needs to be home to take care of baby girls. She needs to be home to take care of her abuela. And it's just that grown up, mature thought process in a young person. And it was just fascinating to read about. The food descriptions in here just made me want to eat it all. <laughs> like I would be at work in a cafeteria and I'd be reading this and I would just, I'd be melting of hunger based off of these descriptions and there are recipes in here that are hilarious and I really would love to try them out sometime. Um, but just anything and everything about this I loved. There wasn't something that I didn't like or I felt could have been done better. It just was amazing and I would really encourage you to read it. And then I've talked about these next two books in other videos, so I won't talk about them too much here, but I read You Had Me and Ola by Alexis Daria and To Kill a Kingdom by Alexandra Cristo. Both of these were books I read on our Ecuador vlog. Um, so, like I said, if you want to hear more in-depth thoughts of each of these books, I talk about it in that vlog where I actually read them. I gave this one 3 out of 5 stars and I gave this one 4 out of 5 stars. This is a telenovela meets soap opera with focusing on two actors who are trying to make it in their field and they have plenty of family drama and just things going along in their life and it's a not like hate to love but like a awkward encounter embarrassing to love story I would say. While this is a Little Mermaid, re a darker <laughs> Little Mermaid retelling um, about the mermaid who cuts out the hearts of princes, but she does something to get her banished to the human world. So she is trying to uh, go back home win her mother's favor, and she ends up getting on a pirate ship with a bunch with the prince of one of the lands, and it's that hilarious journey. The banter was amazing. I had a bit of a hard time with this book, but I don't know if it was just the situation I was in, so I might do a reread of this at some point in life, but yeah, Ecuador vlog, I'll have it linked down below. You should check it out. Then I read a book that I don't have and it's called Zara Hossein is Here and this was by Sabina Khan and I love this book. I rated it five out of five stars. It, it just was amazing. It, it's one of those ones where it takes me a minute to think about because it was, it was just so moving. It follows a Muslim family and all the crap that they go through just in terms like they live in the united states but like when their immigration is threatened and when people threaten them because of their religion and just just for being who they are they get criticized and just how 
they handle with it, how they go through it, how they push through and persevere it was just so moving. And I would encourage everyone to pick this up if they haven't already read it. It was so good. And again, I love the characters. I love their growth. And there just was nothing wrong with it. Then the next book I read was Honey and Ishu's Guide to Fake Dating, and this was by Adiba Jagirdar. I also rated this, well, I rated this 4 out of 5 stars. And the thing is, is that I knew going into it that, like, friend, not like friend abuse, but just like friends not accepting who their friend is and being really annoying about it. I knew that was a huge factor of the book going in, and yet I still had a hard time with it. Um, so it follows Hani and Ishu, and uh, Hani is decided that she's going to come out to her friends as bi. And then her friends are like, you've never dated a girl. You don't know if you're bi. Like, no. And they're just being totally horrible human beings to their friend. And then there's Ishu, and Ishu wants to get head girl, except she's so straightforward that she... She has a hard time making friends and people don't like her. Kinda hard to be head girl when people don't like you. <laughs> so they decide that Honey and Ishu are gonna help each other out. Honey is gonna help Ishu become more likable so she can win head girl and Ishu is going to date Honey to prove to her friends that she is bi and that she is interested in girls. There was a lot going on in the book because you have like that story plot but then you have Ishu and it, situations with her older sister and her family. One thing I didn't really like was that, I mean, okay this goes two-sided. I don't like that they didn't handle the idea of Ishu coming out to her family but at the same time I appreciate that that was not the main point of the story because there are so many like coming out stories. Um, but I just felt it hard to believe that Ishu could just continue to hide it from her family and not address it at all. And then Hani, her father is a politician and so he's trying to, you know, be elected to the next position in Ireland that he's trying to get. Both of them, by the way, are South Asian families living in Ireland. So there's also that element of, you know, Hani's friends don't understand her sexuality, but they also don't understand her uh, ethnic background and like the traditions and how she is Muslim and how she wants to actually practice her faith and her friends are just like you you shouldn't do that and Hani's like oh I want to and then Hani can't because she wants to keep her friends and it's just it's heartbreaking but it was so much so and there were so many other things that I just it wasn't a five out of five stars for me I felt like it could have been done a little bit better but again that's my personal opinion take with a grain of salt Go ahead, I still highly recommend that you read it. Moving on, I did read the next two books in the Tea Dragon Society series. Trilogy? I don't know, there are three out. I read the first one much closer to when it came out and then I recently bought the second and the third one and I immediately read the second and the third one. Both are rated five stars, both are phenomenal. The artwork is gorgeous. The story is amazing. The dragons are the love. I wish there was a little bit more in both of these about the care of the dragons because I feel like the first one was all about taking care of the dragons and then the second and third one were more about the people taking care of them and less about actually caring for the dragons and like drinking their tea and experiencing memories and just so I, I I wish there was a little more on the dragons, but either way, still beautiful, still moving. Obviously, I highly recommend. Um, but yeah, so we have spring, summer, fall. I don't know if there will be more. I hope there are, because I would pick them up in a heartbeat and read them immediately afterwards. Then I read Love and Luck by Jenna Evans Walsh. I, I rated this one 3.5 out of 5 stars. It's about this family who goes to Ireland for... Her, their aunt's wedding and she something happened over the summer so there are four boys and one daughter and the youngest boy and the daughter are very close I mean obviously they're all close because they're siblings um, but something happened over the summer and they get in an argument and it ends up coming out at the wedding a little bit <laughs> and so then their mom is like you know as punishment both of you are gonna go to Italy because she was gonna go to Italy to meet her friend and you're going to 
fix your relationship, otherwise you can't do sports. And for both of them, sports is like the big thing in their life. Um, and then all of a sudden, something happens and they don't exactly go to Italy. But I gave it 3.5 out of 5 stars. So, it was a really great hook. I, from the very beginning, I was engaged with it, I was loving reading it, but then it kind of slowed down. When you got to, like, almost immediately after we had the intro, it felt like it slowed down and it took a little bit of time for things to get moving again. I also didn't like how it's like there's this mysterious thing involving a boy that happened between the two of them, and it just, it took so long to reveal that I was, I had made up my own idea of what happened, and... I lost interest in what the real thing was because I had my own version because that came quicker. <laughs> it just took so long to reveal and I was really bored about it. I love the other elements of the book, but yeah. And then along their ways they meet a guy named Rowan and he was great. I loved his character. He was hilarious. He was exactly what the book needed, but I do wish there was a little bit more of him in the book. It is very much a road trip book, so if you need a road trip book, I would recommend it for something like that, but really the ending was just kind of meh. Um, like it resolved, but it was kind of weird and it just like, I kind of liked it, but I kind of felt like it wasn't anything special. So like at 3.5, it was a solidly written book. It was nice. It very much fulfilled my want of Ireland because I read this like right after reading Honey and Issues Guide set in Ireland. And so I was like, oh my word, I need all of the Ireland. So it satisfied that, but outside of it, it wasn't too much of a good book. So, but I would still like recommend it, especially since it is part of like, a three book companion series. Uh, it's Love and Luck, Love and Olives, Love and Gelato, and I believe they're all connected through like one book's main character is another book's side character type thing. So I don't know if I'd read the other ones just because it's not really my kind of thing, but yeah. If you read them, comment down below. Let me know if I should read like Love and Olives, Love and Gelato, but yeah, I, it, was, it was just a solid book. Then I read The Mermaid by Christina Henry. This was one of the books that I had started reading a year ago. I think it was only a year ago, but it had been marked on my Goodreads that started since then. And it just, oh, it took me so long to pick back up. I was trying to like read it only during the summertime because it's mermaid based. Um, and I wanted to read it initially by water, but at this point I was like, you know what? I just need to finish it. I'm kind of interested in it. I just need to finish. I gave this two out of five stars. I was not a fan. It is a P.T. Barnum story, so it's like a circusy story. But the main character is a real mermaid. She falls in love with a man, stays, he disappears, so she loses him, and then uh, she gets approached by one of... Bar someone who works for P.T. Barnum and she's like, mm, sure, I, I, I would love to make money and travel the world, so sure. And so it's kind of her just like revealing that she's a mermaid for P.T. Barnum and like going off of that. Like I initially thought it was going to be her pretending to be a mermaid even though she's actually a mermaid, but it was like legit like she's a mermaid, come look at it, um, which was a little less fun. Um, but I really, I really wanted to know more about Amelia's world and where she came from. So much of it was just focused on, like, P.T. Barnum and her reflecting back on her relationship with her husband. And there just was nothing before that. And I wish there was a little bit more before that. Because it was, like, slightly magical, but not super magical. And it was kind of annoying. I feel like sometimes Amelia knows better and sometimes she doesn't. Like, she... She lived in the human world for so long that she knows things, but then, like, when she comes with simple situations, it's like she forgot everything that she learned about living in the world, and it was just, it felt very inconsistent. She felt like a very inconsistent character, and same with the love interest for her, I don't remember his name. I know I kept reading his name wrong, so then I refused, oh, I kept reading his name as Lovey when it's Levi, but for some reason I read it as Lovey. Um, so I called him that, but his name is Levi. I wasn't a super big fan of Levi's character. I felt he too was very inconsistent. Um, it reads really slow, 
and it repeats a lot of useless information and it just got to be really annoying and I came so close to DNFing it a couple times but I pushed through. Um, really hated the ending, I gotta say. Like the last 40 pages, I did not like them. The characters were not themselves, the romance was bad and loveless it felt like. It just, it made no sense, I felt no attachments, it was kind of sad. Um, and there were some sentence, there were quite a few sentences here that had like really bad grammar or read awkwardly. Like I had to sit there and reread the sentence over and over again to try and understand what it was trying to say. And then I would sit here and I was like, if you reworded it this way or change the punctuation, it would make a lot more sense. So it just didn't feel like that great of a book. Like there were just so many things that I didn't like and very few things that I did. So I rated it two stars, not a fan. If you see this, then don't. Even if you're doing a mermaid themed reading vlog, just don't, because it's not mermaid enough. And then I read You Should See Me in the Crown by Leah Johnson, and I rated this 4.5 stars, so on Goodreads it's 5 out of 5 stars, but on Sorgaf and in my head it's really a 4.5 out of 5 stars. It was really good. She wants to get a music scholarship to go to this music college, but she doesn't get it. And so she's like, okay, how, how am I going to pay for college? And then she realizes that, oh, prom queen comes with a scholarship. Yep, yep, I need to win prom queen, queen if I'm going to go to my dream college and study music. So she decides to go from someone that nobody really knows to not only being prom queen, but also a new girl moves to school and she's she's interested in the new girl like she's cute she's unique she's fun and the queer community is not something that is uplifted in her community it's very much looked down on there is a little bit of queer hate in here um the book overall is obviously pro queer community but just trigger warnings noting for that that not everybody has that view but yeah it was just such an enchanting little story of a girl winning prom queen and getting the girl. Um, yeah, I think I listened to the audiobook of this in a in a day. Like I just listened to it all day long with everything I did. I loved it. It when you start reading it, it really gets into the plot and the ideas pretty quickly, which was very much appreciated. Like it was a fast-paced book, things would happen. There were a couple things that I felt like the book kind of mentioned in the beginning and then dropped. Like the fact that she had a job in a music store. I felt like it was mentioned once and she went there once and then since then it wasn't really paid attention to all that often and she kind of never went again, I guess. Um, but it very much reminded me of the book Dumplin'. Just in the way of... I didn't read Dumplin' but I watched the movie and I know that's terrible heresy. I'm sorry. I want to read Dumplin'. I'll get there. Um, but it just kind of reminded me of that, of like someone being uplifted and uplifting her entire community with her, um, which was very, very sweet to read. There was a mention to Steak and Shake in here, and I love Steak and Shake, so obviously, you know, I had to have some bonus points, bonus points about that for me. There was a trope of hiding my significant other and then the significant other getting mad, and I didn't like that very much because I, I just don't like that trope. It's not for me. And I wish this book hadn't had done it because I felt like it was so good in every other aspect. I, I did love the ending of it. I felt like it was such like a heartwarming, like the family ending. And it just, it was great. It was great. So I highly recommend this, especially if you're starting school, just because it's a good like academic contemporary read. Um, and if you love music, like yeah, you should definitely read this. So then... I listened to two books on audio, and these are the two books that I listened to during my Thrill to the Weekend vlog, so I talk about them quite a bit there, so if you are interested in that, the link will be in the description, as always, so you can get my more in-depth thoughts there, because I'll just briefly mention it here, because I'm pretty sure this video is long enough. So the first book I read for that was My Sister the Serial Killer, and this is by Oyinkin Braithwate. I probably said the name wrong, I'm sorry. I very much did try, but it was a very short little novella of a book. The audiobook was four hours, so I listened to it in about two hours, and I rated it 4.5 stars. I thought it was really good, but there were some elements that did annoy me that I think could have been written better. 
Um, I wish there was a little bit more sister, sister bonding at the beginning and throughout kind of the entire book. Like not even just that the characters had to be like close sisters, but just having that history of them being sisters and having this attachment because the main character is like I love my sister that's why I clean up after her murders but then like there was no backing behind it especially when it does get into their backstory and you see like how hard of a life they had um and I wasn't a big fan of how the love story ended like this book it's obviously like a murder book because you know my sister is a serial killer uh, but there was a lot like love and romance had a huge part to play in the book and in the end I just was not satisfied with the ending about it but other than that the book was amazing I was hooked from the beginning I loved the characters the concept was so interesting um just oh my word and like because it's a short fast read obviously like there could have been more to it but I'm kind of glad there wasn't and I think it was it was very nice everything was great it was very much worth the time the thing is it didn't take a lot of time to read because it's so short so it was definitely worth it you know and i would definitely um i would suggest that people pick this up like oh my goodness it was so good and so unique then the other book that i read was the cabin at the end of the world and this was by paul tremblay and i gave this 3.75 stars Sorry about the angle change and now that it's the whole tilted thing again, I had to switch devices because my other device just kept running out of storage, which it shouldn't be running out of storage. But anyway, I was talking about this book and I'm just going to finish up by saying I love the twist ending. It, or not the twist ending, the cliffhanger. I love the cliffhanger. I am reading the second book. I am loving it. I highly recommend it super and then i was just gonna briefly tell you about my current read which is beach read by emily henry this was one i really wanted to read this summer and that i started but i didn't quite get to finish so as of this day i have i'm going to finish it today i have less than an hour left in this book um i've got less than 100 pages so I'm going to finish it today and I love it very, very much. There is so much banter between the characters. So it takes place in Michigan, in my home state, which I love. Um, but the two main characters, one is a literary fiction writer and the other is a romance slash women's fiction writer. And they went to college together and they didn't really like each other very much. And so they meet again here in the uh, Lake Michigan cabin area and they decide that they are going to switch genres so she is going to try literary fiction he is going to write a romance novel and they decide to help each other out by doing activities and research to help each other figure out and whoever sells their book first wins like i said i love the banter this book just makes me want to write my own book which is something i should be doing but i'm not but i i should be doing and i've been wanting to do so this is very encouraging. I love it so much. There's literally nothing going wrong. I think right now it's a five out of five stars. If the ending is good or better, then it's going to be a five star. If the ending is decent or worse, it might be a 4.5. But right now it's like a very solid five stars. And like I said, I'm almost done. So yeah, I just wanted to throw that in there so that I, I probably won't talk about it in my next recent reads just because, well, Spooky season is just starting, so I will be talking about spook spooky books for the next month and a half. So I just wanted to add that in there as right before I really get into spooky season. So I'm just, there you go. Those are all my recent reads. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Comment down below what some books are that you have been reading or you want to read. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already. I post two videos a week right now. Normally I post just on Thursdays, but I'm also posting Thursdays and Tuesdays. Uh, hit the bell so that you get notified when I post. And yeah, that should be everything. All of my social media is in the description below, so you can go ahead and follow me on there and keep up to date with my book reviews and just things that I'm doing in life. 
And until I see you all in the next video, I wish you a happy reading.